Mr. All right, good evening. Welcome to the meeting of uh, May 12th. Our first item is a very uh, pleasurable item. I think we've all seen these wonderful ladies before us four times a year, all throughout the seasons, whether it be <laughs> rain, snow, shine, hot, like the whatever the case may be. They're up there, they're on uh, Main Street, the four locations, they're putting down flowers, they're watering the flowers uh, at the four intersections of 109, 16, then near Sacred Heart Church, uptown, and then near the post office. And I just think that uh, you do a great job. We truly appreciate it. No, no accolades, you're just nice and quiet. You just do what you have to do. And I think it makes the town look really, really beautiful. Thank you. And I know you've already started for the uh, spring. I spoke to uh, Scott Scrisafulli today, and he said that he's always available. Whatever help that you need, just give him a call. And uh, we really appreciate the great work that you do. Before we get the bill, I'd like to turn it over to the chairman, the chairpersons, uh, Gail Akuri Reichert and uh, Gandia Kati. And um, how about Gail? Say a few words on basically how many, maybe uh, probably introduce, introduce everybody, talk about what the mission is, the goal, and some of the things that you probably have planned for the coming months. Um, well, I'm fairly new to this, so it's, I've only been doing it for about four years. And um, Grace LaValle was doing the town plantings for probably 19 years. About that, yes. Yeah. And then Candier and I co-chair now, so things that I don't do, she does. So we work really well together. Um, can Lash. you recognize all the ladies here? And maybe some of the ladies who aren't here? Uh, I don't have my list with me, but there's Maria O'Regan, Elaine McNana, Peg Knowlton, Judy Thomas, Carol Burke, and Guru. Um, and there, uh, we have, what, 60 people in the Garden Club? We have uh, 60 people. Members. Yes. Wow. 60 members. Yeah. It has grown. Yes. It has grown. Yeah, it really has. And we've got some newcomer, you know, some new younger people too, because a lot of the old timers, you know, they're they're good, but sure. they're starting to get <laughs> they're starting to get they're we starting to get down. tired, you know, and and they're they've After done years, yeah. they've done so much work. Watch out for a bunch of others <laughs> <laughs> They've done so much work that you know now they're ready to, to kind of step down and enjoy some of the benefits and and you know give it to. Uh, you know the younger ones and in, in the hopes that we take it over for 20 years um, so this year we actually took on a couple more sites um, we don't have the Sacred Heart anymore because of the island situation okay, yeah. um, so we do do the 109 which Maria heads up and the um, 140 which Judy heads up with her team and we each have kind of a team a group yeah. of people and um, we have the town hall obviously you know that and um, we have a little a couple of buckets on main street this year um because we lost the big island there so we're doing like just about you know a few and that may grow in the future um we're also going to take on calzone park this year too oh, nice. because i think i remember from when i was young that sure. that that was always one of the big stopping places in one of yes, the yes you know yeah. Memorial we, Day, Veterans Exactly, and, and they did, you know, it was always like geraniums there, and it was just an old town um, pocket. I think it's been let go for too long. So being a veteran myself, I kind of feel that we need to take that over and do something with it. And we also have the um, senior the senior center that we're doing this year, oh, too. Wow. So a couple, couple more places, and um, the Pox, uh, Mike Brashani's helped us out a lot. Um, with funding and, and things and, and moving some of the pots around that we need done. Um, so this year we're looking for a little bit more color. Last year was kind of our first time and we kind of got a little not too well on it. But uh, <laughs> it's a learning so experience. So it was a learning experience. So this year we're going to do, um, it's going to be mostly hot pinks, yellows, um, and some coleus and uh, million bells. Um, what else? Uh, a lot of marigolds. Marigolds. Yeah. Yes. yes. This Racina, I think. Yes. Yes. We specialize so. in flowers, so we know everything you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I only know it because I read the tags. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I think, uh, Candy, you're in charge of the planting, I guess? Are you the chairperson? Um, well, we both do it. Okay. So All right. it's a group effort. All right. Uh, we have a citation, but I want to get the bill uh, 
before I present the citation, Bill. There's no doubt that uh, the effort that uh, you ladies put forth uh, certainly uh, works to, to beautify the town. Um, we talk about civic involvement, we talk about volunteerism, and uh, this is as representative a group uh, that takes that on, as Dino said, without accolades, without it much fanfare. Uh, you just keep doing what you're doing, and uh, I, I want to say at least, uh, and I'm glad that Dino brought this forward, uh, this is most certainly his idea uh, to have you here, uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's time. Um, Hopefully, uh, if businesses are out there that would like to help out, it's only helping them. Um, if ever there was a, a group that was worthy of uh, funding and support and help, it's your group. And so I appreciate personally what you do for our community. And I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. So with that, I'd like to read a citation. The Greenleaf Garden Club in recognition of your dedication of commitment to enhancing the beauty of our town through your planting of flowers. On behalf of the people of Milford, the selectmen extend their very best wishes and express the hope of good fortune and continued success in all endeavors given this day by myself, Dino de Montlemais, Brian Murray, and William Buckley. Congratulations. Thank you. And now, Gail, Candy, if you come up, they'll, uh, they'll, this gentleman will take a picture of all the ladies, okay? Won't you? Have a seat, and he'll take a picture, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot to mention, Dino, thank you for your service to the country as a veteran. Oh, yes. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Like I said, your father was a was, good friend of ours. It was a long proud. time ago, but uh, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. If you need anything, you can call us up. Call Ricky up, uh, Scott Crisofulli, and uh, we thank you for everything, and you'll make our town look really, really nice all the time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. 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 Gail, you did okay. Candy, you did all right. Okay, bye bye. You're very welcome. Take care. Bill? Bill? <coughs> Mr. Cavanaugh would like to say a few words. Bill, have a seat. How are you? My name is Bill Cavanaugh, and I'm a lifelong resident of Milford. Uh, uh, and I have a few things that I would just like to say, uh, bring to your attention. Um, one of the things uh, that caught my attention, and I can't understand why, is that the, why isn't the Plains Park open? They, it's been closed, and uh, I think this is the time of year that the people would like to use uh, the Plains <coughs> Park. and that it's been closed for, for weeks, and I don't understand why. And, uh, um, Mr. Chairman, if I, yes. if I may. Sure, but, yeah. um, Basically, the reason it's closed is they are replanting, and it has to lay fallow for a while. So it's, a, okay. it's that time uh, for those fields okay. where, uh, unfortunately, it has to be okay. that way. So, so there is a, a uh, valid reason. We, we hate to see it, but that's the reason. I know. Some people have been asking me, and, sure. and, I, and I say, place looks so beautiful and people sure. like to walk the area and uh, I just think it's like this is the time of year sure. that I know, people want to use the, it. That's the reason. So. Bill on that that's a, just one a good point. Rick can they I don't know probably not but can you ask the park commissioners if like people walking if they they walked on the areas I, that would be okay. Okay right? I can check on that. Sure. Yes if that Absolutely. could be done. Yeah. yeah. I mean I can see the fields but maybe the yeah. walking areas could be The walking areas open. Uh, I think you people love sure. to walk yeah. the yeah. walking areas you know. Sure. People can stay off the sure. seated areas or whatever you know. Yeah. The okay, other. Bill, go ahead. Um, one of the things I was thinking about I was wondering if uh, the um, selectmen might have like a th a um, question and answer time um, via the town administrator that people might ask questions for the selectmen, people that can't come to the selectmen's meetings, like uh, uh, elderly and, and handicapped people, that, that they could. Uh, propose some question, legitimate questions, uh, to the administrator t to be 
uh, voiced at the meetings, uh, not for a long uh, a, a time, but uh, you know, m maybe 15, 20 minutes of uh, questions and answers from people from the town who can't attend the meetings. And maybe you, you people can uh, take the questions from the administrator and maybe answer them over the, uh, the media, like your meetings right now. Yep. And, uh, you might take that into. Sure. Uh, uh, there could be something. Well, we'll have to you know, work, work that out. But either uh, you know, talking on the phone yeah, with, yeah. The, with the residents. Exactly. Or, uh, you know, getting the answers, but I think that could it's something that we could work on. Well, but I think it's something to uh, to be more accessible to those people well, who can't come to yeah, the meeting. Yeah, a lot of people can't come right. here. Right. Yeah. And uh, I can, but uh, yeah, and I'm making my words uh, known. Bill, any comments okay. on that? No, my my thought is that you know, and this isn't defensive. I just want to make sure that at least while you ask the question, um, we list the opportunities that we do use, and so. Um, beyond where the selectmen are seen publicly, people would naturally approach us. If people aren't out and about always, and especially you mentioned the handicap, that's a good example where they may not catch us at the market or right. at a ball field or somewhere. Sure. Um, we also um, uh, have our telephone numbers available on the uh, website as an example. Yeah. So folks can call us. Um, I know frequently I get calls. Uh, sometimes it takes me a few days to get back to people, but yeah. um, but we do do it that way. And then um, is obviously the, the the board meetings that you're aware of as an example. Exactly. Um, but I, I appreciate and take in the spirit of your your comment um, that maybe there are other things we haven't thought of. Well, that's what that's I'm, I'm thinking myself. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so okay. Bill, along with that, maybe we can you know put something on the uh, the website. Yeah. A little blurb yeah, for exactly. that situation, and then we can uh, exactly. pursue that. All right. Yeah. The other thing. This is the last thing I'm going to. Sure. No. Take your time. Talk about is uh, I'm a member of the Friends of the Upper Charles Trail, and uh, I uh, am a uh, retired U.S. Army Corps of Engineers uh, civil engineering oh, yeah. design uh, project leader, and I was asked to. Um, participate in some remediation on the um, on the trail uh, with uh, certain erosion problems and that was back in 2012 and so they asked me if I could prepare a plan uh, of remediation of certain areas um, it w of which I did with uh, along with Reno Deluzio and Teresa Mar Maz uh, Mazzarelli. Um, we prepared a um, comprehensive report, and um, this is the report that was submitted to the trail president. Okay. Do you have another one, Bill? Oh, Brian, he's not here tonight. He couldn't make it. I, I have one. All right, yep. And um, what the problem is, like, nobody seems to. Uh, want to remediate these problems and this is an example of um, the erosion problems that exist uh, in, in the area and on the um, on the fall cleanup this gentleman Jim Cockroft and myself cleaned this area up by hand wow. and, and, and it just seems like it never gets remediated and um, we think we think that it's just not getting enough attention to okay. it, it just ongoing. And, okay. Uh, these are areas like at West Hill Dam that have a similar situation, and this is what they have done okay. with the rock um, Rip -rap. replacement, sure, yeah. and, and it, it has alleviated that problem. So. I am frustrated along with the uh, other members sure. of the, uh, I'm, I'm not on the committee, but I was uh, an advisor, mm -hmm. and I would like uh, some action done. Can we keep these? For, uh, you can keep those? Yes. Temporarily? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. This is uh, 
No, that is quite interesting. And um, well, we have good people. I think that uh, this is quite a report. We certainly can't it is, read it tonight, it's a, uh, um, but we'll. Reno we'll, and yes. um, myself and Teresa Mazzarelli sure. prepared the report, and yep. uh, so I'm sure it's going to get some attention now. Bill, but we certainly uh, want to thank you for all the items that you brought up tonight. And as, okay. as far as this, as far as this one, we'll certainly uh, send it to the right people, right. and uh, maybe right. at a future meeting, I, we'll call you in and maybe talk about some of the mitigation that we can do. Yeah. Most definitely, I, I, I have gotten. A, um, I know when uh, Scott uh, has been asked to do things, yeah. he has been very well sure. to sure. do his. Uh, no question. Yeah. And, and he's done a wonderful job. But it just seems like some of these things that have gotten very, people have left the uh, friends because. Lack of attention? Not that he's lack of okay. attention. Right. Uh, it's just uh, frustrating for a lot of people. Well, thank you for bringing yeah. it forward. It's okay. a great cause, a great. Uh, and and, and thank you for your trail. volunteer sure. it's a service. Trail, you know, and I, it I is. And the only speed, the only weak spot is Reno, but we will we'll forgive that. For that. <laughs> but we'll certainly uh, we'll talk about this. We'll review it with the right people. Okay. We'll have it at, at an agenda, uh, upcoming agenda okay. item, and we'll okay. call you back in. I, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack on this myself, but I'm not on the committee, so I, I can take it. Okay. Hey, all you right. just want no to flag. improve things. Yeah, sure. That's all. Exactly. Okay, Bill. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. All right. Uh, Selectman Murray will not be at the meeting tonight. He has a previous commitment. Uh, okay, anyone else on the invitation to speak? If not, uh, signing of the warrant. Uh, I'll motion to approve that. Uh, motion by Bill, I second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. On the minutes, Bill? Um, move to approve, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, minutes of April 28th. Uh, moved, seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, now we'll go to the uh, public hearings and schedule appointments. The first one is uh, Mass Electric. Anybody here from Mass Electric? Fortunately, Mr. Chairman, I do not see anyone from Mass Electric. They okay, so we'll just, we'll just we table just, this till later if he yes, comes in. Thank you. Okay. As everyone knows, the, uh, the town is well audited every, uh, every May, June. The auditors come in. They uh, look at everything uh, under the uh, leadership of the uh, town accountant. And tonight we have Scanlon Associates, who uh, are the auditors for the town, and also Mr. Daniel Hayes, Haynes, who will be uh, presenting a, uh, the report on the financial matters management letter and all that. So with that, I'd like to engagement. turn it over to Zach. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. He's the uh, engagement partner this year. If you recall, okay. Handling, but recommended a partner change, and this is the first year that okay. we're experiencing that. I think he did a great job. Um, introduce this is William Buckley. Dan Good Haynes. to meet you. Good to meet you. Hi, Mr. Haynes. And Chairman you? Dino. Well, thank you for inviting me. Um, again, it's part of the new buzzword and auditing, new set of eyes. Um, so I'm your new set of eyes. Um, hopefully, I brought a fresh perspective um, to the audit this year. I didn't have any preconceived notions of the town of Milford. However, um, I did grow up in Upton okay. oh, okay. In, in the late 60s. And, and back in that time, it's probably the same. There wasn't anything in Upton. So you had to come to Milford to do all your shopping and anything you needed to do to the booming metropolis. So Thanks for the books that you dropped off tonight. We have a copy of that. So I've, I've prepared a short PowerPoint presentation. It's much more entertaining than listen to me ramble on about the financial um, numbers. I have a bit of a cold, so I'm going to grab my water. Okay, take your time. So, Mr. Haynes, how long have you been in the business? I've been in the business for almost 30 years. Oh. Um, started right out of college in 1985 um, and pr pretty much have been doing municipal auditing and some nonprofit work, a little bit of tax work. But we, our focus has been municipal auditing. It's a pretty good niche. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a specialized area, and that's the way the profession is going. Yeah, we look forward to this every year, the board members, because, um, you know, it's very important. 
about 15, 18 years ago, the, the management letter recommendations, there were several areas that had to be addressed, and I think the board has done a good job to address most of those areas. There are a few outstanding areas. And the town um, really works hard to be in good fiscal shape. <coughs> we have many people working towards that end, and so um, working with the auditors in the past has also helped that. So we look forward to uh, to what you have to say tonight. Um, I've also, um, you have the hard copy of this presentation. We do. Um, in your files, as right, so we're waiting for this to power up. There we go. I think we're okay. And I have not seen this presentation, so I'll be following along with you guys as well. <laughs> sure. I think this will advance our slide, maybe. And the box is just above your head, so you... All right. This way. So, what is the point of an audit? Um, it really just focuses on the financial statements, the numbers. Um, it offers only a, what we call a backhanded level of assurance regarding internal controls. Uh, I think the terminology you see in the uh, auditor's opinion is reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements are free of material misstatement. So reasonable assurance, that's an interesting term. If you could quantify that, you'd be doing better than me. Um, what else is an audit do? It keeps the financial management team motivated to follow processes through the year. Um, you don't want to end up in the management management letter. Um, that's one of the one of the things we do and and we satisfy your fi federal single audit requirements. Uh, if you expend greater than half a million dollars in federal funds you have to have what's called a single audit. Uh, we did prepare that for you and I will tell you that the the opinions are unmodified. We, had, we don't have any findings related to your spending of f federal financial dollars and you spent a little over three million dollars about three million and fifty thousand dollars. Most of that is school grants. So internal control. Uh, what is internal control? Um, what we found is it's a process. It's affected by people. Um, and because it's affected by people, you need to remain vigilant in your internal controls, in the structure of your internal controls. Um, the three distinct categories that, that your, your management's ex objectives are effectiveness and efficiency of operations, the re reliability of financial reporting. Remember I said that we're really focused on numbers. That's step two there. Compliance with applicable laws and regulations, single audit requirements, procurement statutes, um, those would be your laws, laws and regulations. What are our intentions? Um, to add value. Um, you know, we talk about a management letter and people think, well, you know, you have these findings and they, they bring it out in a negative context. I, I like to look at the management letter as opportunities, opportunities to strengthen internal controls, gain efficiencies in operations. No, that's what we hope we do with an audit. Um, we are obviously satisfying applicable standards related to the GASB, the Government Accounting Standards Board, and accountability, accountability to you, the governing body of the town. So I'm going to start with the financial reporting. Um, then we're going to move in to a little bit of peer group comparisons, which you may find interesting. Financial reporting, the past, what we had in the past, we had these fund type financial statements. They were very easy to prepare. Um, they were near term. So in other words, there were no capital assets recorded in those statements. We didn't have long term debt recorded in those fund statements. And we've moved, um, you know, in the mid 2000s to the GASB 34 financial reporting model, um, which has a major fund presentation as its focus. Um, there's governmental and business type activities presented. And there's full accrual statements. The full accrual statements, this is where you'll find your capital assets, the long-term debt, 
everything should be in there. Your, your GASB 45 OPEB obligations, um, statement of net position and a statement of activities, um, which measures your revenues, direct revenues against those expenditures that are incurred on a full accrual basis. So what's important? Well, it obviously depends on the user. Um, we identified four major users, the citizens, um, public, um, to help them make decisions on elections, bonds, you know, how the government's operating. Management and the governing body to assist them in making budgetary and financial management decisions. Oversight agencies, um, this is, would be the Bureau of Accounts, they calculate your free cash. You know, sometimes they actually go back and look at our audit report they do. and kind of compare those numbers to see if they're, they're close to what your balance sheet said. And the bondholders and creditors, Moody uses the, uh, the statements to, to generate a bond rating for the town. So, in your financial statements, and I think you have a, you know, I have some bound copies for you, but um, you have the, them there. It's 56 pages long, it includes an auditor's opinion, uh, management discussion and analysis, the MD&A, uh, the basic statements themselves, notes, and supplementary information. Hopefully the notes and the supplementary information help you gain a better understanding of what's in those basic financials. So what's new? Um, these are new only and exciting only to auditors. Um, the auditor's opinion on pages three and four, they've included paragraph headings. They talk about things like what are management's responsibilities? You know, who's responsible for fraud? I, I think this was great. I don't always agree with what the GASB comes out with, or the standing um, setting authority. But this is great, it adds some, it used to be just a hodgepodge and paragraphs and you, know, you didn't know what, what you were really saying, you had to read the whole document, you know, this breaks it off into paragraphs, it's much more read, reader friendly. Unmodified replaces unqualified. I can't tell you the number of times I've met with boards, school committees, boards of selectmen and said it's an unqualified opinion or a qualified opinion. And they would confuse qualified with quality. Qualified meaning, what does that mean? It's, 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 it's a qualified opinion. Um, so if they changed that wording, now it's unmodified. Um, you do have an unmodified opinion. In other words, we call it a clean opinion on your financial statements. Um, your statements are prepared in accordance with GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. And net position replaces net assets. And it's now a statement of net position. Pretty sure the, the, um, the you know, regulations and the GASB, they, they do this you know, just to check whether we can update our reports easily. Good thing is uh, search and replace. <laughs> the financial summary, um, unassigned fund balance. It's a relatively new term. GASB 54 came out with different restrictions related to fund balance. Your unassigned fund balance uh, in the general fund, 16.2 million, or about 19.5% of your budgetary expenditures. Let me tell you, that is quite impressive. Uh, I don't audit many towns, if any that have that unassigned position. Now, Dan, if I could, just so the board's aware, that includes stabilization. It does. Right? Under GASB 54, um, stabilization fund arrangements are required to be presented as unassigned fund balance. Uh, that's up about $866,000 over the prior year. Uh, you do a great job of managing your budget. Um, and that's, that's where these, these, these reserves have been generated from is your, your maintenance of the budget. Yeah, I don't know of any towns that are generating new revenue sources. It just doesn't happen now. Like no. I said, uh, it doesn't happen overnight either. Our board to a small degree, but the finance committee, the financial department has the financial analyst, town meeting makes all the decisions. It's a, so, it's a group uh, effort. Um, this, this isn't the work of one individual. Um, so these, these are your major expenditures. Um, obviously, ex education is your largest expense, and that's typical of every town we audit. Um, so I've got it in this form, and then for the people who like the pie charts, um, you can see the bigger piece that's, that education does take of, of the, the dollars that are spent. Revenue. Property tax is your largest source of revenue. It's also your, it's really your largest asset. Your ability, it's an intangible asset. Your ability to tax your residents your largest asset. Um, brought in over $54 million. You receive a significant amount of federal and state aid, however. Um, $28 million, I think 19 and a half of that is Chapter 70 funds. So when I talk about 
the school expending forty million dollars get a significant piece of that back from the state in exchange for maintaining your you know net school spending requirements our, our, our residents just want one comment our residents are also paying a fair amount of it, it, state and federal taxes so it, yes so, they are that's, a, that's yeah. an excellent point thank you I'm gonna use that comes full sir. presentation yeah. <laughs> Um, there's what the pie chart looks like in, in, in when you're talking about revenues. So you got your property taxes and federal and state aid, two big sources there. Sources of free cash. Um, if you want to look at one state, of the 56 pages that are in that report, um, page 17 is the budget versus actual comparison. Um, it's, it's where Moody's, um, they, they look at your reserves, they look at your demographics, probably demographics first, then reserves, and then they look at your budgetary uh, revenues and expenditures, just to see how you're, you're balancing your budget, how you're maintaining your budget. Um, and again, you're fis fiscally conservative, your total positive variance, almost $1.8 million on a budgetary basis in 2013. Now, Mr. Haynes, as far as that means, I don't know what that means, 1.7. I mean, compared to what would like well that's on an a, average being what well that's on an 80 million dollar budget so as a percentage and percentages are always small. deceiving it's not a huge number I mean if you had a million dollar million 1.8 million dollar surplus on a 15 million dollar budget well, that's you know that then you have to question how how was that budget right, established yeah, yeah. but on 80 million dollars having 1.2 come back in positive expenditure variances you know I just call that conservative budgeting and good management of the budget and, and, and that would reflect in um, uh, what people turn back. Correct. In Those terms are your appropriations of, that are turned back. So, so for example, if department heads aren't spending to uh, every dollar, they're returning those dollars back. I know in some municipalities, people get the feeling that they've got to spend to budget, so they have to, or they right. might not be given that money in the following year. Oh, I've that's, I've, that, that is the general consensus out there. So, that, you know, that that's, adds your departments are maintaining their budgets and they're they're fiscally responsible I mean that's as well as the second component is really uh, taking in a little more revenue in some of the areas like local like receipts. Excise. yeah again when we do the tax recap it's estimates sure. you know right. so. and some of that is conservative budget yeah. Yeah. yep and those budgets are very tight I think they're well put together and also as as they are in most communities Your debt position, um, I've excluded the geriatric authority um, from those numbers, but it's about 25 million in 13, 27 million in 2012. I added up all the education related debt and it's about 55% of the total. That's, and that's about normal. I mean, that's, you know, that's not unusual of what we see um, for, for debt, maintaining good educational buildings and facilities for your students and your, you know, is, is, is a key component. Um, and maintaining good infrastructure throughout the town is, is also important. So here we go. We're off to the com peer comparative data. I hope you find this a little bit interesting. Um, if you could pull out this page, which I think is page 18 of the slide, because I'm going to kind of refer back to that. It's kind of my, my sample group. I have Milford on top. Um, your budget, your budget includes encumbrances. I tried to be consistent amongst each town when I was doing these comparisons. So, um, 83 maybe look a little high, but that it does to include the prior year encumbrances. Um, and then the, there's the populations and budgets for the towns that I'm comparing you to. I'm only labeling them A, B, C, and D. These are actual towns, and they're towns we audit. But in case I say anything negative, I don't want okay. to make sure that I don't have that. Um, and you, you may ask, well, why do we have Town D with a $56 million budget and only 15,000 population? All of these towns have the same bond rating as the town of Milford. So as we go further, you'll see bond ratings are more dependent on demographics and how, what's your commercial base, that type of thing, than they are your numbers, small town versus large town. Um, you're all AA2 communities in the market. General fund debt service payments, Milford, 3.6. You know, we've got, and if you, you know, keep that sheet on page 18 so you can see what we're comparing, um, you're lower than most of the communities presented here, um, except for Town D, which is a smaller town. Um, and your total debt, 22 million. 
you see 67 for the larger town with a larger population than 43, 42, 48. I can tell you the towns B and D have new schools that they've constructed. Um, but look at your per capita debt, under $1,000. That, that again is impressive. Uh, you don't see that very often. Um, you can see that the towns with the new schools, 2,369, a little over $3,000 in per capita debt. <coughs> your, as I mentioned, your general fund education expenses, you're right in there with the, the towns, except for town C. And I don't audit this town. It is one of our towns, but I have to take a serious look or have somebody look at that because I'm not sure that even net meets net school spending at 39% um, with a $30 million education. And that town is actually a similar size. So I'd question the, you know, where that number was derived from. Um, but you can see we're, you know, we're all in the you know, plus 50% range for, for education expenditures. Total property taxes receivable. Um, Milford's taxes are a little higher. You have a little over a million dollars in tax title, tax liens receivable. Um, and you have some older taxes, which we've addressed in the, as one of the management letter points. Um, so, you know, that's a good thing to keep on top of. Your, your collection rate, what I did is I just took your collections less refunds for the current year, divided it into the commitment for that year, and you're at 97%. It's a great collection rate. You can see where everybody else fell. fell. Um, town D, a smaller town, a very f affluent town, um, they're at 98.7. Um, Again, you know, if you, we compare Milford to the other towns, you're just a little higher receivable base there. <coughs> Here's where Milford really shines. Um, again, you can see this is a stabilization balances and excess levy capacity, two um, somewhat related functions. Uh, you know, excess levy capacity, a lot of towns will use their free cash and, and generate money from taxation, put it in their stabilization fund. Um, now, the stabilization balance is $11.6 million. That does not include your stabilization fund balance that you have in your sewer fund. So and that's about another $4 million, 4.8 dollars maybe? Right around there, yeah. So, so that does not include insurance. That does no. not include your insurance um, trust, which we will talk about a little bit okay. in the management letter. Um, you can see where the other towns fall, 2.2, 1.6, 2.1, they're at 11.6. Uh, with an excess levy capacity of a million three, million four, and you've do, done that without debt exclusions. <laughs> I, that's unheard of. Um, the other towns that I, I have listed there all have debt exclusions all over a million dollars. Debt exclusions or overrides? Um, debt exclusions. Debt exclusions, okay. Yeah. Um, but if we added a debt exclusion of, you know, the average is probably 1.2 for the other towns or a little higher, you'd have almost three million dollars in excess levy capacity. Now, Dan, town B has it has B, uh, yeah they have they have debt exclusions on their all of their debt, and fortunately they've had a growth in their commercial base and they have not been taxing to their levy for the last two years. I can tell you this has happened in a three year period. They've gone from a million one point six to three point two to five point three in three years. That's tremendous. It is that is tremendous. Yeah. Right. Um, but still, two point two in stabilization compared to your eleven point six. So that was some of the peer um, comparisons. Um, so we're going to move into, oh, well, let me throw it back. If, are there any questions, financial numbers, anything that you know, sparked your interest or anything you want to talk about? No. no, any questions that came to mind, you actually answered them immediately. So as, a, as I was thinking of them, you were and, answering and them. And thank you. That was some gr great insight. I'm going to remember that tax <laughs> issue there. Um, so the Milford management letter. This nope. is the, uh, we received this in the packet over yes, the weekend. Yes, so you did. Um, this information we just got tonight. So. But no material weaknesses, no significant deficiencies. Um, they're all other items. So you may say, well, what's your requirements? Um, if you don't have material weaknesses or significant deficiencies, I could communicate to you orally all of the findings. We never do that, not in a municipality. Um, because what's important? Um, I'll tell you what's important. Whatever's going to show up in the newspaper in a negative light towards your town tomorrow, that's what's material. So we try to put in whatever we find that sure. we think you should know about, whether it's a material weakness or a significant deficiency. So we have some other items. 
Um, we're going to go through most of those. We're going to go through them briefly, and if you have questions, I'd be happy to entertain them. What's the key? Maintaining cost-effective level of internal controls. Um, can't stress that enough. There has to be a cost-benefit. I could include or incorporate internal controls that would greatly increase your budget. Is it worth it? What's the cost-benefit? Um, and I think you've done a great job of that. I think your, your internal controls are you know, managed on a cost-effective cost basis. So what do we have? Um, reconciliation of bank, bank accounts. Um, this does not show up as a material weakness or a significant deficiency, and you might say, well, maybe it should. They were very immaterial variances, but as I mentioned way back in one of the first two slides, internal control is a process affected by people, so we need to remain vigilant. Um, so as soon as some of the, there's a breakdown in the process, we need to correct it. So I've identified some of the, the real nitty-gritty, the detail um, items that, that kind of make up you know, what's happened with this, this variance over the past year. They're not big dollars, but we need to get the process and get it right. We're talking about cash. Um, it's a liquid asset. Payroll withholdings. Um, so we withhold funds, and I'm going to talk this is mainly about health insurance. We withhold health insurance from employees either a month or sometimes before the summer from teachers two months in advance, which creates a liability account. The town acts as an agent of those funds. We withhold the funds, we hold them in an agent account, and we pay them to the insurance company when they're due. Um, I noticed the balance was higher than what I would have anticipated it should be. Um, that's, a, that's positive. I'd, I'd rather have it you have too much in withholding rather than too little in the withholding. But we need a process, again, to reconcile those withholdings. So what's being withheld from the employee to what's being paid in. Um, some of those the differences there may be retiree payments. We want to make sure that we're allocating the bill. If you have employees that are on a def different percentage basis for their payments, we want to make sure the bill's being allocated properly so that that agency count is being relieved. Self-insurance trust funds. Um, right now we have those reported as an internal service <coughs> fund. Um, those are allowed um, by statute. An internal service fund uh, is a proprietary fund that records any activity that provides goods or services to other departments, funds, or agencies of the primary government. One of the main items that we see is self-insured health insurance plans. It's usually an internal service fund. So we're billing different departments for that, and then we're retaining the risk, paying the premium, not premiums, we're paying the, the costs that are incurred uh, when employees go to the doctors. Um, you've given up that risk. You don't ha the risk is not retained with the town because we're paying on a premium basis now rather than a self-insured basis. So we have about a million and a half dollars um, in what's called a health, health insurance internal service fund, which really needs to be rolled out and either you know, maybe put in your GASB 45 OPEB trust or back into stabilization. Again, very positive. Um, additional money that the town has at their disposal. Dan, if I can interrupt yeah. quick, I think it's important to note that in that balance, 30% um, of that is actually due to employees at the time as they contributed that amount. So out of the 1.5, roughly, say, 1.2, is, as you said, could go to OPEB liability, could drop into free cash, we could appropriate it in more or less any manner that we wish to, but it's important to note that only 70% of that is town obligation. And the rest you would need to grant a premium holiday, which the employees would benefit and the town would benefit yeah. um, in, on the, in those percentages. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for pointing that out. Um, so you also have a liability claims uh, Trust or internal service, two and a half million, and the municipal buildings and property insurance fund of three and a half million. Um, you know, it's just, I'm not the gap police, but it seems like it's more money than what you have for risk. And if you, are, if you have retained that much risk in self insuring your buildings, then perhaps the town should look to some reinsurance offerings, which are very you know, inexpensive. You know, where, you, where you would pay the first you know, catastrophic event $100,000 and then reinsurance kicks in any time after that. So you've got about $7.5 million here in, in some internal service funds. Okay. Um, which you know, I'm, I'm saying that you, know, you should 
maybe look at those, review the current you know, methodology, and, and determine. Uh, and that may, you may look at that and say, you know, that's exactly what we need. We, we've retained that much risk. Um, so I'm really bringing it to your attention. Payroll reporting period. This is where you use the auditor. I always tell people, use the auditor, get something, you know, gain some efficiencies and say, well, it was his fault. I'm, I'm happy to take the blame. Currently, you pay payroll on a weekly basis. It's a repetitive process. There's a lot of paperwork involved. There's time involved in that. Um, most of our communities, I, I believe I checked, there's only one other community we audit that has weekly payroll. So, you know, the state doesn't, it has allowed for quite a while, bi-weekly payroll period. Um, there's some administrative costs to get it started. Um, you have to have acceptance of your, your unions um, of that procedure. But I think you'd gain some efficiencies in a, in a process that's very repetitive by doing that. And hopefully save some money. And I think we've tried that in the past. We are, yeah, and we're gonna still continue okay. to with it being in the management letter now, maybe we have a little different position to attack it, but yes, definitely. But Mass general law allows for that. The question is, to what extent does that have to be bargained? Correct. Yeah, yeah you would have to get agreement from yeah. your, your bargaining. You know, we've worked very closely with the unions in the past on maintaining costs on health insurance and all that. The unions have been raises and all that, so I think on something like this, uh, hopefully we can continue to negotiate so yeah. that we can have a unanimous and then go every two weeks. Well, I think the town concerns or the way it's addressed here, how it um, could free up time and be more of a powerful spin on it, I think that maybe we might be more successful bringing it to the table again. Well, sure. I like your enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got 90% of the people on board, so just... Well, we One just more attempt. To, <laughs> you know. Nothing's perfect, but we have to keep trying to That's right. That's right. make things better. Yeah. I think if everybody has the right agenda and the right attitude, we can. We've done that many times. So we just. Have to yeah, and it, and it's information. You know, you need to get the information out there. This does not create a tax problem for the employee. Have the same withholdings. It's just withheld over bi-weekly period rather than a weekly period. So well, it comes out in the wash. Yes. Yes. <laughs> does it, does there, let me ask this question: Is there anything that prevents us? from uh, doing it with the employees that agree, the, the, the units that agree, and departments that agree. To my understanding, no, like we currently have um, bi-weekly for the s school teachers as well as a weekly, so yeah, yeah. we're talking to some people, and uh, maybe Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, we could move forward with, if, say this uh, particular union still is reluctant to agree, we still could move forward with the ones that are on board, yes. That true. It would, yeah, it would, see yes, it. you could. It would be great to get full cooperation. Yeah, it would. Oh, absolutely. No, no, but but I want to. I don't want to have the ten percent hold back the ninety percent, and, yeah. and that's where we are today. Yeah. Um, yeah. If that if it's that small of a it percentage, is, then it then, is. It, then it still makes sense to do leverage and take advantage of, and and work out those issues on a, a individual basis with those units. Right. And okay. further, further, I think it's a lead by example situation. They see there's really no downside to it maybe we get them on board right no. exactly and that's yeah. the other thing they'll hear from family members and friends is yeah the ability to budget and manage because sometimes it's just simply the change that it, it, it is exactly. yeah. I, I work for the commonwealth i remember whenever it came up 18 20 years ago uh everybody was an uproar and all that but it actually it's worked out well and i think most people now would say no every two weeks is fine they, they wouldn't want to go back to a right. every week Um, revolving funds, okay. revolving funds, but you know, from our, not only our detailed testing of revolving funds, but accounts, but from a higher level. And I noticed that you have, the school has 16 revolving accounts with a combined ending fund balance of $910,000. A significant portion of that is in the, what, the community? Community use, correct. Use. Around 450000 at the end of um, 2013. Which, which may be perfectly fine. I just, I've, my recommendation is you review the fee structure that you have. I'm not sure the town needs to be generating a profit from these activities. And that the fee should be designed to recover the costs that are incurred. Um, and maybe even if you wanted to build in a small indirect cost, but um, you know. Yeah. So I'm saying you review these 16 revolving accounts and, and you know determine what the 
what the fee structure is. And again, for some, of, for some of these bigger ones, this is a buildup over a number of years, maybe even decades for that matter. So as Dan said in his original uh, presentation, he, this is his glance at this town, his first time doing it, and this is his observation. So I think with it being exposed here, uh, I'll get with the school department, superintendent, business manager, we'll talk about it and see where we're at. And are the, just out of curiosity, Zach, is the school department, uh, specifically the business manager and superintendent, aware of this management finding? Yeah, yes, they are. We discussed it last week, um, and we plan on discussing it further in more detail. Very good. Yep. Um, number six, finance director. Yeah. Is the town at a point now where you need to seriously consider um, having a finance director on board rather than using the town accountant type of, of government? No for your finances um, yeah it's a, it's one of those you, you get to a certain point where a finance director does make sense because they can certainly change or improve the control environment at the top and that's really the tone at the top um, from everything from trying to generate additional dollars through the tax collection process looking at tax liens um, debt um, structure of debt whether Debt exclusions make sense for a town of this size and future borrowings. So those are the types of analysis that a finance director can do that a town accountant doesn't generally have the time because they are involved in the real day-to-day -day operations of the numbers. So it's something to consider. I, 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 you know, I'm not telling you that you, know, no. you need to do this. There are towns of this size that do not have that. Town D in our example, the last town, the smaller town, does have a finance director. It's worked out quite well. Actually, it makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, it's a good recommendation for us to look at. Yeah, we've talked about that in the past. Not at a real depth level, but we've talked about that. In order to do that, Dan, are we talking about much more personnel or not really? I would think probably one person. I mean, I would think that if somebody like Zach was promoted to the finance director position, so one person underneath it. So you would, you would need to hire a, a town accountant to, to maintain, the, you know, the similar to the duties that he performs now. Okay. Oh. We, there are situations where the finance director is also the town accountant. I just, Correct. That's I more entitled than it is yeah. functionality of the position. But certainly something, you know, you, you might want to consider. Sure. You know, talk to other towns that have done that, that have taken that leap. I mean, if you, if you adopt, you know, strict GFOA budgeting guidelines, I mean, that's something that just takes a lot of time. And, and if you're gonna get to that level, yeah. that's something that you seriously you know, consider having a... a and one thing this, this board had just done a few months ago was um, expand the role of the assistant town accountant where I've been giving them a lot more responsibility with the uh, higher recognition. So I'm not sure uh, it would be necessary to hire someone in addition if the or decides to go down that road. No. So it could be cost neutral, but it's something Correct. that you'd always look back on to see if it's if, if you would need more help. It's, it's not Absolutely. something that would be fixed. You know, next year you could look at it again. And Absolutely. See. Yeah, you yeah. certainly have to address that in the, in the you know yeah. if you're doing sure. a study or looking at sure. it. And, and and again, asking other communities you know what they've had to do. Sure. That's something you could get us right. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah, I, definitely. I, I, I think, think it's so sorry. You know, I think it somewhat goes hand in hand with some of the uh, no comments and reconciliation with uh, the town accountant. You have segregation of duties and all that. Where I think the expansion into a finance director would give a little more exposure into them areas and um, keep controls tight. Yes, it it does add in an additional level of you know looking at internal controls. And I'm not saying it should be an internal auditor type of position, but a finance director looking at the control structure, um, you know, from the top, and, and making sure that those those mid-level and lower-level controls are in place, and you know, you have good act control activities and monitoring. You know, that's something that that those expanded duties could take into consideration. You know, we're coming close to 90 90 million dollar yeah. budget now, so that's a pretty yeah. pretty it's good sized company. So yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. I think we've always looked at. Um, controls in the finance area to be very positive for the town. So I think any every, any time that we've had a chance to do something to strengthen that aspect, we've done so. 
I think if we started now or you know within a few months, whatever, to look at that, uh, I think this is something that probably we could probably have working with the FinCom and all that within you know a couple of years, maybe sooner. But I think it's when I saw that I, I, really, I was I'm glad you made that recommendation formally. And I only had one prior year item that I've repeated, and that was on the uh, old delinquent, delinquent real estate yep. taxes. Um, there are some taxes that go back. I think the identif identification of the owner, there's some owner unknown properties in town. Uh, I know those are there to try to find. Um, we need to dedicate resources to do that. But I think it's important to bring those onto the tax rolls. Mm -hmm. You think about generating a bill to an unknown owner, you can't collect it. It's certainly probably, you know, depending on the amount, plays into your collection rate, that 97.09%. Um, if you don't have any unknown owners, you bring it back into the rolls, you're collecting more in the current tax. There are a lot of businesses that uh, they had $3 million in receivables would be off looking at that pretty quick. Yes. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, this is something that's been on the uh, on these reports for the past, probably, past 10 years at least. And I think we've made an attempt to do something about yeah, it. Yeah, and those are being addressed, and but we I noted think, that. You know, once and for all, we should try to, you know, nip this in the bud and try to, you know, complete it over the next year, year and a half. Because how many parcels are we looking at? Do we know? I don't have that number in, okay. in here. Um, I, I, no. I, you know, it's not substantial. I mean, obviously, it's not 20% of your tax base. Right. But again, every year that goes by, sure. those are taxes that <laughs> you're not collecting sure. that are. That are bringing in dollars. Yeah. But it compounds on itself Correct. over time, right? Correct. So now, that, the tax that, liens, and I think exact, the tax liens are, so, right. tax liens, collecting a tax lien converts directly no to free cash. So, so that's, that's something that, yes. you know, you continue working with the administrator, the town council, and see if we can really close that so that it won't be there next year or at least the year after. Absolutely. Yeah, no. yeah I, I just think, uh, I'm not sure, we, did you have more to go through? Because I, no, I, actually, I didn't my see next number one. Question. I didn't see management finding number one presented, so I just want to make sure you may have unintentionally skipped skip that. No, I think you did it. Uh, that was the bank recs? Yeah, the reconciliation. The reconciliation, account. okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, I had some questions related sure. to that, yeah. and then there are more for, for Zach. Maybe you uh, skim through it. Um, this one draws a lot of attention from me because it says that we can do a better job. And again, I look at your report as opportunities for improvement, nothing more. And this isn't a punitive response, but I just want to make sure that, that uh, I understand it because at, at this point, the, the management response, um, frankly, could use some more meat in my opinion. And maybe we could look to get that within the next week or so as a detailed response to each of the findings. Yes. And I would look for a few components. Okay. You know, who the owner is. Yeah. What's the uh, What's the action plan, and when we intend to uh, close on it. And I'd also look, and while you know the the the, the one that'd be a little more difficult to do that with, is the receivables, the tax title. So uh, what I would look for from the accountant's office is a goal to bring that down and significantly by some percentage over a period of time where you think we have the resources and can apply the, the effort. So yep. if set it's a 50 percent, yeah, yeah. Set, exactly. Yeah. Set an objective to say 50 percent reduction. I'm throwing out numbers. Yeah. It has to be based on, you know, what you think. But to be closer to the benchmark communities, you know, a 50 percent reduction over the next year yeah. or, or year and a half or two years. Um, and, and I don't say that to you, Zach, to say, look, this is on you to solve. Frankly, it's on management to solve. It's on this board to solve because, as Dino said, we've been looking at the same finding for 10 years. Yes. So, and I've been here for nine of those, so I'm not, uh, and I'm the more junior member. Of yeah, this no, board, I, so. I completely understand. So it's on us. Yeah, We're just asking for your help, and what I'd like to see is some objectives. Yeah, I just definitely. want to set expectation. Right. But bank, bank accounts and reconciliation, I'm a little confused by it, so I want to better understand. I wonder if you could give me some more detail as it relates to, to um, reconciliation of, of bank accounts. And it, and it says that 
this this um, cash book reconciliation goes back as far as June of uh, 2013. Right, and we keep in mind we were auditing June of 2013. Well, what they what they do also is subsequent testing into the new year. Okay. So, so, so I want to understand: is that a problem that continues to today, or ended as of June uh, of? 2013. Sure. 2013. Yeah, no, it certainly uh, continued. Um, we went through a transitional period, as you well aware, from elected to a appointed position. Um, yeah, but that was the elect, just the elected just treasurer. Nobody seen it coming. It just happened right at crunch time at year end. So when you're doing a June reconciliation, you're really doing that in July, sometimes even August when you're at year end at that level. And uh, I think. Uh, Treasurer's office was under a, tr a tremendous amount of um, not difficulty, but pressure this year with a lot of obstacles thrown at it. And but I've this been, goes I've back. This goes back to treasurers. Just to um, be clear, not necessarily. I mean, when he's, he's identifying that June was not reconciled, but again, it's not being reconciled till July or August. But okay, let me ask this yeah. question: Do we have a May reconciliation of 2013? Yes. So that was reconciled. June wasn't reconciled. It was reconciled, just could have been done better. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, maybe you could give, provide a little more detail about the importance of this finding. From my perspective? From your perspective, oh, from an auditor. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and I said it in the recommendation. Um, the lack of formal bank reconciliation procedures increases the risk of errors of fraud occurring and going undetected. Cash is your most liquid asset. Um, not that this is all cash, it's you know bank statements and reconciling those bank statements to the ledger, but that is the nuts and bolts. Um, that's what, you know, the cash is coming in, going out, it's a, it's, it's a process, and that process has to be reconciled. The reconciliation between the, the treasurer and the accountant is critical, um, that and, and the reconciliation of receivables, those two items okay. are the two crit critical areas where things can go wrong. And see, it's funny, this is where I linked your recommendation for director. It, exactly. And I, and I think that could make a real difference, not only here, not only in the reconciliations, but in those, the collection of those receivables, aiding in that, pro helping in that process. Right. I'm sorry. Those were the two yeah, those places. Those two that items. I thought, yeah. Because what it does is it sets up an environment where you have accountability to a single person who's, who's finance skilled, finance educated, understands interfaces with you. Uh, but also has, you know, to your point in your recommendation, um, oversight over some aspects of the collector's position and treasurer's position. So as, as we move forward, uh, you know, I would look to Zach, I guess, to, to, to implement this reconciliation process, but I'd also look to the treasurer and collector to make sure that they're enabling that and they're clear about the expectations of that. Uh, so, uh, and that we not let multiple months go by without no, that absolutely. happening. absolutely. I've been working with Irene for a few weeks now and she's jumped, as soon as she came on, jumped right into cash as she should, recognize her behind in that area, jumped right in. Uh, I think she brought some new reconciliation tools to the table been working with me on everything so I think it's been working out great and I, I see that being a tremendous partnership going forward okay and by by Irene you're talking about the the new t uh, town treasurer correct okay yes. the newly appointed the one. newly appointed town okay treasurer. very good yep all right I feel better and if you're on it Zach yes sir <laughs> uh, and, and if you have uh, uh, that more detailed management response with some breakdowns of deliverables objectives that would be helpful. And Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, Bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, Dan, this was very helpful. Um, Thank you. I just think it expounds on what we're trying to do here, and we're very fortunate to have Zach. Yes, you are. Uh, he was a great find, and uh, and I think it's important, you know, moving forward, all these types of things. Anytime, I know we've, we've called upon the auditor in the past to assist whenever something came up to make departments, to make the financial process a lot cleaner, tighter, more streamlined, and, uh, you know, more advantageous to the taxpayer. So we'll definitely continue those things. Yeah, and, we're, and that exchange of ideas is, is 
critical, and it, it helps us in the audit process. You bet. Sure. You know, it's a, it's a two-way street yep. there. So, so thank be, you for the service. Yeah. Thank you. So you'll be with us for a while, right? I, I hope so. Okay. Yeah. We got a three-year deal. Oh, okay. <laughs> three -year deal. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you later, Mr. Scanlon. I will. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Zach. Okay. I don't see. Uh, The first appointment, Mass Electric and Verizon, so they're probably not coming tonight. Our next appointment is with the Marshals. Hi, Richard. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. I think everyone knows Richard Goldberg. This is an application for antiques, secondhand dealer's license. Um, my, this father is wished, my father wished to be with us. He wasn't feeling well. Sorry. Okay. We understand. Uh, Hope he's feeling better. Understand. Better. Great family. <laughs> okay, 154 West Street, uh, Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Like I said, secondhand license. The uh, town official's information sheet uh, is an order. Uh, you know about the tremendous amount of taxes, 49, 46, right? I, I think uh, you paid that today. I okay. believe it's already been taken care of. All right, of. good. <laughs> I heard I had uh, Ricky call you today and put the arm on you for that money. Uh, this is an application, new license, secondhand antique dealer. Um, this will be Monday through Saturday, 10 to 5. Everything seems to be in order. Uh, you want to add anything to that? I'll answer. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Um, I was here during when the chief brought up this new statute. Yes. Um, point that I brought up that I think would probably make uh, elected officials feel better is that I don't do any cash. I only pay by check. Mm. It tends to, it basically stops anyone who has nefarious issues going on. So it's really, for most, 99% of my transactions are people who are purchasing a new ring who say to me, what am I gonna do with the old one? I'll take it in trade and reduce the price of the, the transaction, that's it. Well, I think you and your family have always done things well in Milford, very professionally. Thank I think you, you service mm -hmm. the uh, Milford people well in the area. And I think that uh, I wish we had more uh, businesses like the businesses you and your father have run in Milford. Thank you. We're beginning our 60th year uh, promotions. So my grandmother started Marshalls in 1954. Bill, any questions? I don't. I, I would agree with your, the comments that you made. I have no reservation at all about your request. And Thank you very much. Okay. Is there a motion? Yeah, I'd make a motion to approve. Move and second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? You know, good luck. Thank you. All right. Take care. Okay. Next, uh, the town engineer, Vaughn Reese. Vaughn, how are you? Fine, thank good you. Morning. Hi. Bonnie's been coming to all our meetings. She's going to be a regular <laughs> part because she's so uh, proficient <laughs> and uh, does a great job for the town. This is uh, a report on Louis the Louisa Lake Dam. This is something that, uh, as we all know, whether bridges or dams, they're inspected. Uh, we received the report over the past couple of years, and then this one was a recent report. And so Bonnie's going to go through it, and I, I talked to her today. I said, let's, let's present all the information on the table, uh, short-term recommendations, long-term recommendations. We talked about uh, maybe procuring $2,000, $2,500 to hire a, uh, an engineer to start the uh, inspection on the dam. And then uh, Avani will also have some recommendations for us. So, because um, I think, you know, when people see this, especially people who live close by, they become very nervous. Uh, and, I, and I think I w we would be too. So. We want to assure people that we're on it, we're doing the right things here, and going forward we'll have a, uh, you know, this dam rectified within a year, year and a half. So with that, Vaughn, you're on. So the, um, the town has been very proactive, and this, is, uh, this letter from the Office of Dam Safety is not a surprise to anybody. Um, the letter does make it sound like it's very, it's very grim and dire, and um, I did meet with the dam inspector from the Office of Dam Safety out um, at the dam, and he explained to me that this type of letter is standard. It sounds, it's very strongly worded, but 
Um, they're, frankly, they're not all that concerned because they know Milford has been proactive about their dams. Um, so I, I tried to summarize um, in my memo the uh, several page letter from the Office of Dam Safety. Basically, they um, cited the dam as a significant hazard potential um, because of several deficiencies, including overgrowth of brush, uh, lack of regular operation of the sluice gate, evidence of erosion in several locations, and some cracks and voids in um, both the dam and the riprap spillway after the dam. So there are, are like you said, Dino, there are short-term and long-term solutions. Um, we do have to hire an engineer who's certified to do dam inspections um, to come and do an inspection before June 30th. We need to file that report with the Office of Dam Safety. And then every six months thereafter, do a follow-up inspection. Um, so the first, the first step would be to, to do that initial assessment of the dam. Um, the clearing of the vegetation on the dam has been something that the highway department has already been working on, and so they've scotty has been on that. They've right? uh, they've already completed a, a good deal of that. I think it made it into the letter just because it was kind of a leftover from the previous report that was done two years ago by GZA for the town, contracted by the town and for the town. Um, so S Scott and the highway department have been working very di diligently to get that vegetation cleared around both the dam and the two dikes that go into Louisa Lake. And then the phase two dam inspection and investigation would be a much more detailed investigation and evaluation of the structural integrity of the dam. Um, it would include um, permitting and the putting together of construction documents as well. Um, so that's a little bit of a larger item that we probably need need to talk to after we meet this first deadline. Um, the gentleman from the Office of Dam Safety that I met with did tell me that the deadlines in the letter um, in for the after that first phase, after that first inspection is done, are somewhat flexible. So for example, if the town needed to wait to go to town meeting in October to appropriate the money for the next phases of the program, um, that's a conversation that I could probably have with them and, and talk about adjusting those deadlines. But um, it is something that we need to look into. If we can, if we can fund it immediately, that would be great. Um, and if not, then we'll have to look at other options. In terms of the long-term compliance actions, um, we do have to notify all the abutters to Louisa Lake and within a half a mile downstream of, downstream of the dam once we have a plan to um, do repairs on the dam. And then we need to move forward with construction of the repairs. Um, the letter states the dam must be brought into compliance by November 30th, 2015. Again, that is uh, something that we can negotiate with them. I actually have already spoken to GZA, who is our um, stormwater consultant, and, and we are looking into potential for grants for that construction so hopefully the town will be able to get some type of grant money to do that work now Vaughn that date of November 15th November 30th 2015 that's a complete uh, finished yes. off project of that dam, completely right? finished project okay so the the goal here the long-term goal here is to do the repairs on the dam that will there that will stand for many, many years to come, and then um, we can check Louisa Lake off the list and, right. and look at one of the other dams in town. Yeah. I just think we should be, you know, proactive because this is, you know, it, it is important. People, people uh, become nervous whenever they hear that, and a lot of times misinformation also makes it worse. So I, I spoke to the administrator today about the $2,000, the 2500 Rick, were, we were able to find out anything about it? I, I think we'll be able to okay. handle that. Yeah. So I think, you know, the board could probably, you know, get going on that tonight. We could vote on that. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'd like authorization sure. for me to, to proceed to um, put together a contract with GZA sure. to do that inspection for us. And I think that the um, we should present 
well, the administrator will work with the uh, finance committee chairman of uh, letting him know what's going on, all the information and the cost uh, factors going forward. Um, you know, we should be aggressive with this and prepare a an article for town meeting that in October, if we have all the information, I think we, we should be able to. And I think as far as notifying the, the butters, Ron, if we can, I'm not saying this week or next week, but if we can put together a little a letter <coughs> and me. let the people on Dilla Street, if we can, you know, send a letter to each home, at least advising them what's happening, what the information is, uh, what the plan is, and that if they have any questions, they could. But I think that would be uh, a good, you know, good uh, effort on that part to, you know, keep okay. people informed. We can okay. Do that. Yep. Bill. Yeah, I just had one question, uh, Rick. Um, Who's the, <coughs> who's the actual person responsible for making sure this uh, is followed up on and that we get it back to uh, a, a point where it's not considered structurally deficient or in poor condition? Because what I hear is a lot of names, and I just want to make sure I understand who the point person is. I mean, I'd be happy to be the point person. No, I, think I don't think it should be. No, Scott, so I Scott think and I will be working. Yeah, I'm just looking for one name. My recommendation would be then Vonnie to be the point person. She okay. has the most familiarity sure. with it. Yeah. Obviously, we'll work with Scott. I would like to be kept in the loop, uh, also. Okay. Um, but yeah, that would te be my technically Scott is in charge of the dams in right. town. Um, I don't think he would mind me being the point person for the uh, paperwork part of it, though. Yeah, and, and the reason why I ask is, is there's continuity that goes back to the prior uh, town engineer. We're talking about. Uh, the report that came out in September 20th of 2012 and again March 18th of this year uh, without what I would say is significant headway made on the um, the areas such as uh, the sluice gate regular regular uh, checking of the sluice gate uh, voids and cracks grouting riprap so I, I haven't seen anything come by this office, so I'm not, that's why okay. since then I haven't seen anything. And, and I appreciate the fact that you have the town engineer uh, that you want to appoint as the, uh, the point person for that because then I'd look for those reports to come out of that office and her to spearhead this uh, activity sure. with uh, the state as well. Sure, I'm okay. fine with that. No, that sure. was my only yeah. comment. Yeah. I was just looking okay. for a yeah. name, a sure. person. Sure. sure. So, Vaughn, I think this is uh, good that we're bringing it forward. We're addressing it short term, long term, and we'll keep the uh, FinCom chairman updated with all the information, all the financial aspects. We'll notify the abutters on Dilla Street, Kunisha Park Road, of what's happening. And, uh, and then we'll look forward to um, hearing, receiving the report from the, uh, the engineer who will be expecting, inspecting the dam. So with that, I think we could make a motion that we'll uh, proceed to hire an engineer to inspect the dam at a, what, cost of 2000 mm -hmm. We'll just have to find some. Are you sure that's there. sufficient? You're comfortable that's sufficient? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah I asked them to give me a yeah. quote. All right. So that's moved and second. Second, yeah. yeah. And that's unanimous. Okay. And, thank you. Uh, okay. Vaughn, bon, thank you. Thank next, you. She has the next one, I'm too. Next. Yeah, you have the next yeah. one, too. <laughs> okay, this is on Milford Pond. Regarding some expanded uh, environmental notification, water quality, and notice of intent, and we do have the monies. Uh, this would be uh, not to exceed fifty-seven thousand. And Vaughn, you could give the particulars, okay? As you know, we're uh, doing this project with Army Corps of Engineers on Milford Pond, and GZA has been working with us on this one as well. We um, have obligations to complete permits that um, if the Army Corps of Engineers was doing this project without our involvement they would not have to do it because they're the Army Corps but as a municipality we have to so they do not consider the cost to prepare those permits eligible for our in-kind contribution which was 1.8 million dollars so we appropriated money for the match for the project, but we did not have the money set aside for these permits. Um, I don't think that it was clear at the time that we entered into the contract with the Army Corps of Engineers um, that, that that was going to be the case. 
Zach and I went back and looked through um, the records of what we have for Milford Pond, and there was a capital fund, and then there was some other money in the $1.8 million that we can free up. So the $57,000 is available, and it was originally appropriated to be used for the Milford Pond project. Good. Yeah, I'd make a motion that okay. uh, that we approve the use of those funds Move for this purpose. And uh, this will probably be the last expenditure before we go off a bit. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Any discussion? Not all in favor? Opposed? Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. Oh, Vaughn, just yeah. five more minutes of uh, publicity here. Uh, can you talk about Memorial School since you're here? To sure, drop I would be happy to get that out of the way. Um, we received a complaint from the police department, uh, issues with people parking on, um, on, this, on the street in front of Memorial School. Those areas right in front of the school between, um, between the intersection of Emmons Street and Grant Street on Walnut Street um, are used by the parents for drop off and pick up. And uh, the intention was for those to be drop off and pick up areas, but there's no signage there. So the request was made that we paint the curb yellow so it's clearly a no parking zone, and we put up signs that say drop off and pick up only, no parking zone. And the police chief concurs with this, and Scott is able to do the work within his budget. Okay. Motion. Well, I don't know, it, since it's within budget, I don't know that, it, but I do appreciate you bringing up uh, correspondence between the chief and uh, the yourself and uh, the highway to let us know that this is going to be going on and solving a problem that they have concern over. But it's within the budget, so there's no more vote or approval required, Correct. right? Correct, yep. Uh, unless there's approval from signs? I guess just the signage was All the right. only area yes. I had. Right, yes. Yes. Movement yes. signs. Yeah, movement signs. Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay, you. okay, you're free to go home Thank now. you. <laughs> All right, thanks, Bonnie, for everything. <laughs> Okay, at this time, that, that concludes the uh, schedule appointments at this time. And I guess the Mass Electric will not be here, so we'll have to uh, reschedule them, right? I will do that, yes. Okay. Um, Town Administrator's report. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the registered uh, marijuana dispensary, um, I participated in another teleconference call along with the other representatives of the 20 towns and cities where provisional licenses to open uh, a dispensary have been granted. I met with the executive director of the program, legal counsel, deputy director, and compliance manager. Uh, at this time, they informed me that expanded background checks are still taking place. After that is completed, the compliance manager will meet with town department heads to review and discuss inspe inspection process requirements regarding compliance with the DPH regulations. I also spoke with Michael Dundas of Bay State Relief, who and he and I will be setting up a meeting with, uh, with him and his representatives as well as uh, re relevant department heads to get a status report to include a timetable from them regarding their construction schedule and a tentative date for the opening of the facility. Um, uh, local aid estimates based on the House final budget are in. The estimates for Chapter 78 is uh, a little over $20 million. The estimate for unrestricted general government aid is $2,717,877. As we all know, these estimates are subject to change as the state budget process progresses. I'm happy to report the accessible fishing platform is now complete. I did attach a photo for the board. I do want to extend a special thanks to Harold and Marsha Rhodes for their generous donation to fund this project, which will be enjoyed by um, many. Um, I have been informed by the sewer department that they have authorized its sewer consultants to test alternative methods of dewatering sludge from the town's wastewater treatment plant and design a th sludge thickening facility. John Minini, Director of Sewer Operations, has informed me they're doing some pilot testing of equipment to see what will be the best alternative. What other method, whatever method is used and equipment is installed, he informed me the sludge thickeners will be covered and moved inside and odor control will be implemented. It should be a significant improvement for, for uh, the system. I know we've had some concerns from neighbors, so it's kind of an update for them. And then finally, um, I have Written to Worcester County Sheriff Louis G. Evangelitis to inquire about using the community service program for projects in Milford. 
I spoke with Senior Custodian Carlos Benjamin and Parks Director Michael Brashani to discuss potential projects. We have identified two such projects, cleaning and, spread, uh, clean, cleaning and spreading mulch at the police station and also cleaning uh, town-owned parking lots. I then met with Lieutenant Stephen Hines on May 9th. He provided me with the rules and regulations of the program as he is the supervisor of the program. We have scheduled the week of May 27th for hopefully three to four work release prisoners to uh, come to Milford under proper supervision, under proper guidelines to perform um, this work. Uh, we do need to provide uh, uh, food for them and also the tools and equipment for them Thank to you. use. Um, that's all I have right now, Mr. Chair. Bill, any questions? For no, no questions. Discussion? Thank you for the detail. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. Okay, at this time we'll go to old business and we'll be talking about the uh, finishing off the annual town meeting articles. Bill, could you make a motion that we reconsider Article uh, 17? Certainly. Um, yeah, that's I make the, a motion uh, yeah. that we reconsider Article 17. Okay, thank you. Um, First thing I'd like to, you know, I think the uh, Varney, the town engineer, uh, town planner, Reno Deluzio and Bob Buckley uh, have worked hard on this, on the reservation restriction uh, process. And, uh, you know, a lot of work, and I think it's, it's good work and good things, and hopefully someday uh, the town may be able to use that. We've had um, the Board of Health also uh, uh, was in favor of that going, the town doing that. The uh, planning board, FinCom, um, have not supported it, and that's fine. I, I think they uh, they raised some questions and some concerns. Because I think on, on this particular issue, I think we're all trying to do the right thing here. I think we're trying to protect that land uh, so that no one touches that sensitive piece of property. Uh, I've had a lot of, uh, I've had many, many town meeting members call me and write to me over the past couple of weeks commending the board on what we've been trying to do, and at the same time saying they feel more comfortable with uh, the, uh, the 200 acres being under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. And I think after having listened to all those individuals and town meeting members and uh, Bill's thoughts on the matter, I, uh, I feel that, once again, I think it's, it, most times, it's, it's, when we're going in the right direction, I think it's good to be inclusive. We've received the comments uh, from our town officials, and we want to thank them for their valuable work. Uh, but it's the uh, other individuals who have to vote and have voiced their concerns to me. So um, I was in favor of the uh, reservation restrictions with the trustees because I thought if there were two ways, if there were an absolute way of doing it, that would probably be the best way. But um, having heard all the comments and the feelings, and you really can't uh, dispute what a lot, many, many people are saying that, you know, let the Conservation Commission handle it, protect it, nurture it, and then someday down the road, if the town meeting or selectmen feel that something else should be done, that's their prerogative. So if there's a motion, that the, this piece of property be uh, under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. Uh, I'll have uh, Town Council uh, draft that particular article and uh, it, it will be presented at the town meeting on Monday and I will second that motion. All right, yeah, I'd, um, my, my thoughts are generally that, um, you know, I think what we've heard and what we've seen uh, from some boards and committees are our penalty of being fiercely loyal and Milford proud. Um, I, I, just as you said, Dino, I think the benefit of this discussion is it uh, got in front of everybody, mm. the, the town residents, uh, the various boards and committees, that this is an area that's sensitive and needs to be protected. Um, I think there are vehicles that people have mentioned, uh, water overlay districts that make it incrementally harder for anybody to do anything. Um, and my concern is that for us to uh, take this to town meeting, um, we'd almost have to give the impression that it were under threat. Um, I know that any prior proposal by any past town meeting planner, uh, town meeting mem um, town planner, I should say, 
uh, would have met with fierce opposition, and you had mentioned you personally being opposed to any yeah. prior discussions about development there. I think uh, this raises that awareness, and it requires two-thirds town meeting vote. Conservation Commission, uh, I believe, is eminently qualified. And I think with the possibility of over water overlay protection district and zoning, I think there are additional high hurdles that we could put on protecting that land, but all within our control. Um, you know, I've had the opportunity to look at and not disparage the uh, trustees of reservation, but you know, when I look at their tax tax returns and see executive directors making two hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, executive vice presidents making one hundred seventy seven thousand dollars a year, and we talk about altruistic five hundred one three Cs, there are people making an awful lot of money doing that, and I don't uh, I, I don't uh, want to talk too much about. Uh, that portion of it, but I just, I just, when I look at the board of directors as an example, and the vice president's claim to fame would have been that he uh, helped uh, put a development in uh, a casino in California. I, I think Milford's qualified to do this, and I appreciate uh, the fact that you've uh, gone out and researched it, and I would make the motion to support that it go under the conservation uh, commission restriction, and that uh, we de delete any any reference to uh, trustees of reservation? Yeah, moved and seconded. Any more discussion? Uh, yeah, and there's no question. Uh, many years ago, when I proposed this at town meeting, uh, and I looked at all my notes, uh, you know, I, I asked the town meeting members, you know, we would protect it, we would uh, make sure that there's no development and all that. So I think that's consistent with that. I don't think I used in, perp in perpetuity at that time. So I, uh, but uh, it's, the message has been clear and. Once again, they, they wanted me to, to mention each one of them that they commend the board on what we're trying to do, and uh, I think this is, um, you know, a good, a very good compromise going forward. And like I said, 20, 15 years from now, if other people, boards want to do something different, they certainly can. So with that, uh, nothing else. All in favor? Opposed? Two in favor? Okay. So have town council prepare the uh, the right article. Okay, Rick. Yes. Okay. Also, Bill, I had a discussion with the other idle article that was maybe a little bit controversial, uh, clarity and all that. I had a discussion with the chairman of the uh, CIC. He's a good man. Uh, I talked to him about some alternatives, some suggestions uh, going forward, and uh, he was going to bring it back to his board, so I, he'll be making some sort of a discussion or presentation Wednesday night but hopefully we can uh, you know over the next year continue to work with that and, um, and as far as the differences maybe clarify the difference or eliminate the differences or make the the article even stronger going okay yeah mine was just a process question how things yeah. get submitted okay yeah. oh yeah no 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 this is over and above that okay anything else in the articles I think, uh, we've, I think we've covered all, all the other articles Yep. And we still have a meeting if we want to yes. support. Yes, okay. Uh, okay. Yes. At this time, we'll go to the administrator for the uh, the IT director. And uh, Rick, as Bill has said in the past, you, this has been a tremendous undertaking. Uh, I never thought would be at this position tonight and uh, with a recommendation of an IT individual. Uh, Chris Warren is also here, part of the committee. Zach, so, um, you know, great job, and we look forward to your uh, recommendation. Rick? Yes, thank you. Um, th as you know, the position was advertised in the Boston Globe and the Beacon on April 1st. Uh, we also posted on both the uh, Beacon and Town websites. We received uh, 22 applicants. Um, on Friday, May 2nd, and Monday, May 5th, a uh, committee composed of Robert Tremblay, school superintendent, Chris Warren, a FinCon member, Carlos Lazard, one of the members of our Technology uh, Task Force Committee, and myself interviewed uh, four candidates. We thought we had four very well-qualified and experienced candidates. However, uh, one we thought uh, stood out based on his education, his extensive experience as a director of technology in two school systems, as well as his technology skills. Uh, we believe that Alan Graham has the necessary qualifications and background to support the appointment. Um, he has served as the director of technology and operations at the Ashland Public Schools. He's currently Director of Technology at the Framingham Public Schools. 
He has extensive experience in school technology, which included preparation of budgets, overseeing capital projects, designing and managing the implementation of infrastructure upgrades, and providing technology leadership excuse me, for staff and students. He's uh, worked with superintendents, school administrators, municipal employees, school committees, boards of selectmen. Uh, he has also, uh, in looking at his resume, worked as a technology director in the private sector. He's a graduate of Worcester Polytech Institute with honors. He completed his degree uh, in three years. Um, myself and the members of the committee respectfully recommend that Mr. Alan Graham be appointed to the director of technology position. I do want to thank uh, the four people I just, uh, three people I just mentioned. In addition, I want to thank Sue Edmonds and Police Chief Tom O'Laughlin for helping us uh, also in, in this process and continuing to serve on that uh, committee. Um, if the board were to approve this recommendation, I would also request that Mr. Graham be placed at grade six, step five, uh, with that starting salary. Uh, I would also request that he be allowed to begin working on June 1st, 2014. I did meet with the personnel board uh, this past Saturday morning, um, and they have approved uh, Mr. Graham uh, starting um, at that grade uh, in step. Um, so with that, I would uh, welcome uh, any questions. And yeah. look for your recommendation. No, but I do want to make a comment. Sure. Um, so my first review of this resume, um, my first impression, I should say, of this resume, uh, not meeting the individual personally, having taking on faith and trust uh, the folks that work so hard to, to screen the applicants, that uh, my first observation was this person is very uniquely qualified for this, this position. Um, I'm glad to see a resume like this in the candidate pool. It's not a surprise to me that you made it to the final four and that, that your recommendation is that this person uh, go forward and uh, be appointed. Um, I continue to be concerned, and I'm going to say it, I continue to be concerned about the salary. Okay. Um, um, uh, I th think it's low for the responsibilities. He's going from a school district to an entire municipality. Um, and we, you know, us folks in the private sector always like to benchmark private sector. Um, and um, from a competitive standpoint, I, I realize it's not private sector because there are pensions and there are other intangibles here, but um, let me say this, from a, from a taxpayer standpoint, they ought to be assured that people that are working in the private sector are making significantly more money than this, doing this type of role. So um, uh, I, I just don't want to make it a revolving door. So I appreciate it's a good candidate, high skills, uh, impressive resume, impressive education. And Chris, thank you for your participation in it in the back of the room there. Thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's okay. all I have to say. Okay. Motion. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy to make a motion to appoint uh, Alan F. Graham uh, of Upton uh, as our next Director of Technology. Okay, motion seconded, any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. The Good, great in, job. Board is in agreement with the uh, yeah. starting salary. I'm Obviously. sorry, and at the recommendation sure. starting salary that you would work out with the yeah, personal. Right. That would yeah. be Thank June you. 2nd, right, Rick? Uh, actually, I'd, well, it'd be June 1st, okay. it's a Sunday, but it's right. okay. yeah. Thank Bill, you. anything under old business? No more under old business, Mr. Chairman. Okay, and the new business, uh, we did Memorial School. This is breaking AIDS right. Is there a motion? You know, it didn't come in on the standard form, and, and I appreciate the amount of detail that's here. What I don't have, I have a assertion by the... Uh, by the uh, logistics coordinator that they've contacted uh, Chief O'Laughlin. But as would be typical for any uh, any uh, obstruction or walk or ride through the town, normally we'd get a form and normally we'd get the uh, Tom O'Laughlin signing off on that. So 
Yeah, we, 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 he has. I apologize. It's okay, so we do package. have it. I yeah, just this don't is have one it where, in my package. Yeah, this is one where the chief really does look at the route and actually helps out, if I remember, yeah. in past years. You're, yeah, he knows the correct. touchy areas. He Absolutely. knows where they need to be safe, yeah. where and we need to. Okay. He oversees the route. So and, uh, we have his, his approval. You saying case. that is uh, enough for me. That. I'd Thank like you. to make a motion okay. to, to approve this. Thing. Move, second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Next, PINS has an extension of hours for the common venture license for May 23rd, June 6th. This is for after uh, prom uh, parties. Yeah, motion. Yeah. Move and second it. Unanimous. Milford Lions Club looking to uh, banner over Main Street, 169. Move. Moved and seconded. That would be on May 13th to June 13th. That's unanimous. Veterans Annual Parade by John Pillar. This is for uh, Monday uh, 26th. And uh, permit to obstruct a public way, which is a parade. Yes, uh, move. Move. Motion, second it, and that's unanimous. Bill, anything on the new business? No more. No. Okay. I had asked uh, the administrator to send a letter to the owner of the property on East 104 East Main Street. This is right at uh, Cedar Street, the gas station. Yo, Gibbs. Uh, the former Gibbs. Um, I just think it's a case now where, you know, it's unsightly. There are cars parked all over the place. And hopefully, uh, the, the individual will respond to the administrator within a couple of weeks. I will follow up. And if not, follow up. And I think, Rick, just uh, to ex you know to provide more information. Um, you know, next next times, you know, CC work with town planner, the town council. Okay. Uh, short. You know, we're looking for short-term improvements to that area to make it look viable. It's in the center of town. It's a major thoroughfare, long-term long -term plans. Uh, also, with, with cars and trucks parked there now, I think as far as, you know, the leaking of oils and all that stuff, the Conservation Commission may have a problem. Okay. And uh, if there's any way that they'd be willing to sit down with us and negotiate a price to, to maybe obtain that land. So um, I, I think, of anything, something has to be done where they, they can, you know, put loam on it and seed it and make it look presentable, but any one of the other things would also be good as far as the town is concerned. Bill? Yeah. Um, normally when a business exists, there's a site plan, there's a parking configuration, there's lanes striped. And as a result of the leakage of uh, fuel at that and, uh, location and the subsequent remediation, all, all parking, all the business, the building, has uh, been left to uh, sit idle and uh, people are parking willy-nilly blocking sight lines so there's a lot of reasons why we would need to work cooperatively with that landowner um, and I appreciate the chairman's uh, you know thought I, I think we ought to work the enforcement side okay. if, if the efforts to work cooperatively with that owner are not successful um, ownership is a little bit tricky it's something we need to consult with uh, Council Moody on simply because we know its history, we know it's leaked, and we know they had a significant amount of leakage. Um, so, you know, I just don't trust oil companies. If they want to donate the land to the town, that'd be great. We could make a nice little park there or something. But yeah, I think uh, this is aside from that, right? Maybe we can do something. But yeah. something has to be done. I agree with you, and you, you, I'm glad you raised that point, Mr. Chairman. It does look awful. Then we also have Bill uh, the last drink that we received. This is where an individual was brought to court and they asked him where his last drink was. And it could be accurate, could not, but we received these. And what we have been doing is sending a copy. We received these from the police chief and uh, we also sent him a copy and also to the business now. We have on one, uh, the Turtle Tavern, Cafe Sorrento. On the other one, the Royal Buddha, Turtle Tavern, Pins in the Alamo. So we'll be We'll be sending uh, a letter to those establishments. Um, Bill, do you have any, any other correspondence? I don't. Okay. That concludes the open part of the meeting. We do have a couple of items for executive session. On collective bargaining and litigation, is there a motion for executive session? Yeah, I'd, I'd uh, motion to go into executive session on collective bargaining for the sewer department and town council moody uh, litigation claim. Motion by Bill. I second. Roll call vote. All aye. in favor, aye. Opposed. We will not be coming back into open session, and good night.